Cesar Chavez became the most important Latino activist in the U.S. history by creating the United Farm Workers and starting a movement to help farm workers earn better wages and also improve their working conditions. Look, as long as there is exploitation of the farm workers, the union is viable. The, the union exists because the growers exploit the workers unmercifully. And as long as that happens, the union is going to be around. And when Cesar Chavez and Dolores Huerta co-founded the UFW half a century ago, it was an incredible act of bravery. They believed that everyone had a right to fair pay for hard work. Today, Cesar is no longer with us. But I think he would be incredibly proud of everything you've done on behalf of the workers he loved so much. Si se puede. Who was Cesar Chavez? Cesar Chavez fought for the rights of farm workers, which are to have suitable working conditions that would pay them the amount of money they deserve for the time they spent on the fields. This is what left Cesar Chavez to take responsibility to make change for the hardworking individuals who were going through injustices in California. Sadly, many people know his name, but do not know what he did to help others. We interview random people without letting them know that we need the answers so that they will respond as honestly as possible. Our question was, do you know who Cesar Chavez was? If so, who was he? Many people say he was the president of Venezuela. Some said that he was from Cuba, that he was a boxer, or that he did violent things to get people to do what he thought was right for his country. Some others answered that he was doing things for people's rights in other countries. A guy. A guy? <laughs> yeah. That's it? Yeah. I know it's a school. That's all I know. Who's the school The school? Who did I say that, Chavez? Mm -hmm. Boxer. Famous boxer from Mexico. He was awesome when I was a kid. Kind of got older to stop boxing, but he was pretty amazing. I think he was a leader in Cuba. He was an activist. He was a farmer, I believe, an agricultural person who led a, a revolution. He started a riot for, to make it equal for the people from, that worked in the farmlands. It was somehow shocking that some of these people had been teachers and students from the Cesar Chavez Junior High and High School, and they did not know who he was. They only knew that it was a school. Even other students said that they only knew about the school, but not the person. Fortunately, we did find people who didn't know about him, and our team got very excited when we did get to meet people who didn't know who he was. In terms of what I heard him say, not what I read about him say, I'll give you two things you can pin. Can't lose. If we look at history, we can't lose. Because what history tells us is that where people don't give up, where they keep fighting, where they don't let other things get in the way, that um, that we will succeed, we will prevail, um, but that it won't necessarily come soon or easy. And so when we say so, like, what's the real goal of this boycott? You know, we talk about the goal of this boycott. I'm trying to get in his voice here. Talk about the goal of this boycott being to, to win a contract, but it's not about winning a contract. The purpose of this boycott is to prepare for the long struggle. We decided to create a short film to teach our community about Cesar Chavez and to ensure his legacy lasts. Now let us all teach who Cesar Chavez was and his long-lasting legacy. What really makes Cesar Chavez a legend? Cesar Chavez was a self-made Mexican-American who became a civil rights leader and a hero of the 20th century. He was born near Juma, Arizona on March 31, 1927. He was one of the survivors of the Great Depression. Cesar Chavez's parents owned a farm in a grocery store his father, Librado, and his mother, Juana, did their best to take care of their businesses. But in the time of the Depression, both of their businesses fell, and they ended up losing everything. This led them to move to California and start working on farms, including Chavez, who was a young boy. 
As he grew up, he saw many injustices committed against immigrants. Well, I like to tell people that in addition to him being a labor leader, you know, he felt that farm workers can better their lives by um, joining labor unions and fighting collectively together. But he was also a person that believed in building um, coalitions. So he built coalitions outside of, you know, outside of the largely Latino community that he was working with. Um, he built them with other, um, you know, of course, other labor organizations, but he built them with, um, you know, environmentalist groups. He built them with um, the African American community because he knew that by working together and asking these people that are outside the left Latino community to join our movement, that we could be that much more successful. The farm owners treated their workers as animals, violating their rights and supporting unsafe working conditions. For example, workers in the strawberry fields would call their berry, la fruta del diablo, the fruit of the devil, because the harvesting of this required them to bend down all day long, arranging the berries in fresh spaces. I think there are better alternatives. There, there are ways that farmers can farm without pesticides. If they, There are natural ways to control uh, pests, which uh, means that they don't have to use poisons. So if farmers can find better natural alternatives, it can be better for the, the plants that they grow and their own health so they don't get affected by the pesticides. The use of strong pesticides, unsanitary living conditions, low wages, and child labor were just some of the injustices against farm workers. Chavez received the same mysteries that the other farm workers did, so he had a great understanding on what these farm workers were going through. If we put ourselves in Chavez's shoes, what would we do? That's the question that is crossing our minds right now. Chavez ameliorated the suffering of many people and is still the role model of many, especially immigrants and those fighting for workers' rights. Making this film and educating others about the impact and the work that is still left to do seems like the least that we can do. As we return to Chavez in the fields, witnessing the injustices around him, the beginning of his revolutionary ideas were born. Chavez was taught by his mother at a very young age that violence does not solve one's problem, it does make the problem much bigger. He also learned this as he taught himself how to read and study the great leaders like Martin Luther King Jr. and Muhammad Gandhi. In response of the violation of workers' rights in 1962, Chavez, with the help of Dolores Huerta, created the United Farm Workers in California. The mission of the organization was to fight for the basic rights of many workers in the field. A nonviolent strategy that the USW employed was a huelga strike. And Chavez even went on a 36 days hunger strike in 1988 in order to prove how much of an impact they can make without creating violence. The success of the protest led the organization to merge with others to form a national organization called the United Farm Workers. It organized a great boycott in California and then moved throughout the rest of the United States. During the boycott, the workers urged people to stop buying grapes because the farm owners were not paying the farm workers enough money to survive. The success of the grape boycott led to a lattice boycott. The farm workers realized that their minimum wage was not going to get them anywhere in life because they were losing their health in the fields and they were not even able to give their children the education that they all deserve. More than 5,000 of the 7,000 farm workers walked off their jobs and the lettuce production dropped 70% in three weeks, causing the price of the lettuce to double in the market within those three weeks. Although at first, some farm workers had refused to join the UFW because they were afraid of losing their jobs, once they realized that the UFW was really making a difference, they joined the UFW. Jennifer Chavez fought for the rights of workers who wanted a better life for their families. He is a symbol of leadership, nonviolence, and justice in the U.S., particularly among immigrant communities. His words, si se puede, are still used in protests for immigration reforms in the U.S. This courageous man helped people move forward, and even after his death, 
the humble people who follow his footsteps are still making a difference around us. Para estar a su lado